Let me say good morning. And uh, it's wonderful to be here. And it's wonderful to have all of you with us. And um, yeah, a great lineup for today. As I mentioned, um, it's an exciting to have Liberty with us again. A lot of you were not part of this session last year. So it's exciting to see what updates they have and um, to see anything new from their side and to have Alex Ford with us for the first time. I did want to mention two upcoming sessions um, that we are excited to share with you that we hope you will join us. Next week we have um, our next masterclass session, SMME clinic masterclass session um, from Hoppers 8 to Hoppers 9. I hope you keep your eye open for that invitation with the Zoom link. We hope to see you there. And then on the 23rd of July, we have a very, very exciting um, smart supply conference hosted by the city of Cape Town. And I wanted to share some information about the topic that we'll be discussing. Um, the conference has got two parts. The first part is a panel discussion with the theme of Jack of all trades, master of none. And on this panel, we will have professionals from corporate sector, public sector, we will have SMME representation, as well as supporting businesses. And you will get a perspective from each of these individuals in how to best specialize and approach your businesses, um, you know, your clients with a specialized focus and the benefits of doing such an experience from past is from SMMEs who have approached with multiple special specialities and, um, you know, the change or how they introduce more than one speciality to a client over a period of time and the success that they've had with that. So please join us. In the chats, you will see the registration link for the Zoom session. It's online and everybody is welcome to attend. It's free to attend. And we hope that you guys will be there with us. Very exciting. All right. Welcome, Anissa. I just saw you came in. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that you had a bit of a, a struggle with your, with your, with your travels coming to the office. I'm glad that you are safe and it's wonderful to have you with us. Good morning. morning. Good morning. Apologies for that. No, we fully understand it is part of life. It's not a problem, um, but we are just so grateful to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. I know you've been with us in the past, but it's always uh, wonderful to see if there's been any changes and to have you with us and just to connect. And a lot of the audience we have here was not part of the session last year, so it is a first time for them, so it's new people. But um, to kick off the session, if you are ready, it would be wonderful for you just to introduce yourself to all of us and your role within Liberty. Thank you so much for that. So I'm Anissa Rabani, um, and I, um, I'm the lead for preferential procurement within the Liberty Group, um, and that covers Stanlip and partially Liberty Two Degrees. And uh, with our integration into Standard Bank, um, there's additional areas there that we would need to sort of cover now as well. So yes, um, we're excited about this uh, this integration into the bank. A lot more opportunities, I suppose, that probably be available for a lot more suppliers out there as well. Wow, that's exciting. So it's growing. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and Sort of, can you give us an idea of how the procurement process works for, let's say, for onboarding, starting at an onboarding perspective, and then the the filtering through to becoming actually an active vendor within Liberty? Yeah, so it, it's it's quite a process. So how um, people usually get to be onboarded at Liberty is if you partake in a, in a RFX process, whether it be an RFQ, an RFP, or a request for information, or sometimes even a full-on tender process that we do uh, tend to put out there. Um, our tenders and, and um, our processes are normally closed, so it's never advertised in terms of the requirements that we do want. So it's good to, to know who the suppliers are out there that provide certain services that we might be requiring. Um, because of that process that we follow. So basically what happens is, is if there's an RFP, RFQ, RFI, or a tender process, what happens, um, we go to market, we invite suppliers to partake in the in the actual process. And, um, you know, obviously everybody's driven by cost. And, and I think one of our mandates as a company is, is cost optimization. So those are the things that we're looking for without actually compromising on quality. So, you know, it's it's about getting the best supplier that can do the best job for you at the best price, basically. And um, once that happens, um, we go through a, a, 
So internally, um, if it's a tender process, we, for, we, we, we form a cross-functional sourcing team, which consists of myself, usually it consists of the buyer, the sourcing manager, or the category manager. And then it uh, consists of subject matter experts, meaning the people in the business that actually require the, the service or the product. Um, once CFSD is formed, obviously the suppliers are invited. There's a briefing session that is held. The briefing session basically is just a breakdown of everything that is required. And then when that is done, um, suppliers are then um, forwarded documentation that they would need to then complete. Once they've completed it and, that, and, that, and then they have submitted it back to us. So there's only one form of um, channel of information that will come through and that would be the buyer because there is a dedicated um, email address for that particular person. So you're not allowed to contact anybody like myself or the subject matter expert or or anybody else for that matter with regards to the process that is is underway because then it's seen as a as a as a conflict. So you anything you need to know you you speak to the the buyer. And then once we've sort of gotten everything together in terms of financial analysis. So one of the things that we also look at in terms of the due diligence that we conduct on our suppliers, and even if you are not a supplier, we ask you for your your BE certificate. If you are BE accredited, we also then ask you to provide us with your legal compliance documents of your company. And that is to ensure that you know that you are a legitimate company, your tax clearance is in order. And also um, what we've been asking for um, is as well is sort of financial statements. Um, just to ensure that whatever goods or services are being provided, that the company is not expecting us to pay them upfront for the service because then obviously, um, you know, we, we create a an obligation and sometimes that obligation is never fulfilled. So we ask for a... Um, we ask for financial statements and the financial analyst will just basically go through it and just check if your company is solvent, are you able to service your debts and that type of thing um, without waiting for a, a, a one ma a million rand payment from Liberty to sort of cover that debt. Um, once we've done all of that, um, suppliers are then um, sort of um, the, the buyers or the procurement team, they sit and they go through the, the responses, they go through bids, they go through pricing, they check everything. And um, then what they do is, is consolidate everything. And once they've consolidated everything, they then see like who's given us sort of what we want um, based on the briefing session or on the actual statement of work that has been issued. And then what is the pricing that has been sort of um, given to that service or those goods that are required? In most instances, we work off rate cards. So obviously we understand that if we are dealing with a service provider that provides services, there is a rate card and we benchmark that against the industry best practice. So we know when more or less the pricing is actually um, benchmarked at all. The pricing that the supplies are giving us are basically benchmark prices. And, you know, we do, there is a bit of a leeway that is allowed. Um, I'm not sure what that actual percentage is. I cannot tell you that right now, but there is a bit of a, um, a, a sort of a leeway allowed and as long as it's within the budget that the business unit has for that particular service. If you are not a supplier to Liberty at that particular time, we would then ask you to complete um, um, a whole lot of documents. And when I say documents, it's all system generated documents. We do have an external company that manages that process for us. So they would then be in contact with you on behalf of Liberty and you would need to complete all that um, information and once that information is completed and the the vendors actually the details are captured on our supply database you will be issued with an order number but in the meantime back in the process where you've been successfully awarded is then what the doers is there's a contract that needs to be generated because you're not allowed to start services without an actual contract. You're not allowed to start the services without an actual purchase order. Um, and only until that has been done and completed can you then provide the services to Liberty. So basically to be onboarded as a supplier to Liberty, you would need to go through a process um, where it's been a, a tender process or um, an, an RFX uh, process that was followed. So yeah, it's 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 not just taking a supplier that says, oh, okay, I provide um, 
for instance, I provide IT services. I'm a black woman owned business. Um, and I know that this is the service that you want. Yes, it could be the service that we want, but we don't just register you on our database. You basically have to go through a formal process to be able to be registered on our supplier database. Okay, thank you. It's a, I'm sure being part of a, a financial institution, there's so many checks and balances. I know my husband works for one and it's intense every six months. Everything has to be updated and redone and reconfirmed and so many different things. So, you know, working and doing work with a in financial institution, um, you have to be prepared for the time that it takes to become a vendor and to qualify for all those areas and so uh, thank you I, I i appreciate the in-depth explanation of the process it gives uh, an indication um you know for smes to have a guideline of time and not to think that it's a 24-hour process but it could be weeks if not weeks maybe months process because of all the checks and balances yeah, that's correct, yeah. and I, I do know that we are busy. So what we, we what we've been busy doing on our side is we're developing a system where suppliers can go and sort of um, log the information. So basically, what type of services you provide that is not yet available, but what type of services you provide, who you are, how long you've been in business for, so that when our buyers or when our sourcing team go out to market, that they can just go into that database and readily extract that information based on the type of services that they're looking mm -hmm. for. That hasn't been done yet, but as soon as that is completed, I definitely will share that with you guys so that you can make it available to any supplier that does actually come and ask for that type of information. Yeah. Wonderful. I think that helps. If all the original information is submitted or from the get-go, it makes the process after that a lot easier. So that's exciting for you guys. I'm sure you guys are excited for that to come into no, we play. Are. Yes, we are. I think it just also makes the buyer's lives a lot more, uh, so, so it makes it a lot more easier when you when you embark on a process and it's not still about going and looking and seeing who's best out in the market. So if you've got this database where this information has been captured, you are able to just access it and go and see, okay, fine, ABC Station is, is as registered their business here they do office consumables and they maybe they do a little bit more than office consumables but um let me try them on the office consumables and i'll, I'll invite them to partake in a process that i'm undergoing and we do this every year so every year we we have so so basically we have we have uh tender processes that we follow the rfx process and then we also have a catalog uh process so Sorry, um, I see these questions being asked. Should I answer them now or? We'll get them now. We'll get to them now. Don't worry. We can finish with the subject first. Okay. So what is, uh, what, 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 sorry, I lost my train of thought now. Sorry. So we have, no, no, that's no, okay. So we have the RFX process and then obviously we, we, we work with catalog. So when I say we work with catalog, meaning that there are services that are cataloged, um, our office consumables are cataloged, our um, certain IT peripherals are cataloged. Um, we have um, flowers and things like that are catalogued. And every year we basically go out to market to see who else is providing those types of services so that we can actually invite them to partake and in, in the process that we then um, embark on. And if they are successful, they are actually then registered to provide that service to us. So that is also another avenue of knowing that there are other suppliers out there that do a service like your net flowers that it's not just net flowers that does it you know so it's also how do we then break away and I'm, 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 I'm using the word very harshly in terms of breakaway but how do we then allow the opportunities to the smaller black owned black women owned businesses to be able to provide that type of service that you're getting from the larger businesses like the net florist so it's, it's about empowering and also creating these sustainable smaller business and the catalog basically runs year on year so it's like you know that for a year there's fixed business coming in uh, it's not just sporadic in terms of when that type of service is required. So that's also another a good advantage to have our smaller suppliers partake in as far as our catalog um, our catalog processes go. Okay, that's pretty exciting to know. Um, gives an opportunity as well. And I wanted to find out, so one of the questions is where do you advertise your different, so now the catalog that you mentioned and your RFPs and your RFQs, and where do you advertise them? So we don't advertise them. That's why I said in the beginning, as everything is sort of a closed process. It's it's basically 
uh, by word of mouth, oh, I know the supplier that does this, or, you know, I come into smart procurement sometimes and I, I, I ask questions, who does this type of service or who does that? So that is how we do that. We don't have a portal um, where we actually um, go in and say, okay, fine, Liberty is embarking on this uh, um, RFX or this process, and yeah, people are welcome to submit um, bids for this particular thing. We don't do that. We do it close. So that is the reason why that portal is being created where people can actually register their businesses so that when we do go to market, when we're looking for a service or goods, that they are able to then register their businesses there on that portal. And when the buyer or the sourcing manager goes to market, they access the portal and that information is there already. Unfortunately, that is how we do it. We just don't have the capacity to 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 manage it if it's in if it's if it's advertised and it's open mm. you can imagine it's quite a large influx of re, you know responses that you will receive so i wanted to ask now with the you know the we've got about 70 odd um smmes on the call now um do you have any current sourcing needs that you are aware of that we could potentially talk you know tap into this audience so to be honest with you right now there is nothing. So because of the integration into Standard Bank, and obviously a lot of budgets have been slashed and cut and that type of thing. Like I said, cost optimization is key for the bank right now. So all the projects that were basically started at the beginning of the year has actually been put on hold, you know, obviously cost containment and that type of thing. So at this point in time, to be honest, I cannot tell you that, yes, there is a a requirement that we need. I mean, we have our day-to-day -day things that we're using, and that obviously is um, it's, that is through the normal catalog suppliers that we are using or whatever it might be. Um, but other than that, the needs right now, it's it's slashed. Um, in the gray space, I know that we do have um, requirements and graces. Obviously, um, it's in the construction industry. But what that is the one thing that we are looking for is full turnkey suppliers. Yeah. Okay. In that particular space. Yes. And if we if we have, um, for instance, SMMEs within the audience that could actually assist with that, is there a contact that you could share with me um, for them to reach out to someone? Um, just to so say, you know. So basically they would then send... If they have details, they would send it to, a, a, so there's an email address that we've got, preferential procurement um, at liberty.co.za. So it's preferential procurement, one word, at liberty.co.za. Send it through there, and we will then send it through to the to the buyer or to the, the sourcing manager. And they will then, what they will then do is contact the supplier and probably arrange a meeting to meet with them to to fully understand what it is that they do okay yeah. that's great okay um i did can you just confirm the spelling in the chat i did put um the email in the chat you can just make sure <laughs> that my spelling is in line <laughs> it's okay so I'll, so okay i'll let me type it out okay i'll, okay. I'll type it and then you'll have it okay <laughs> oh, no, no problem <laughs> it's fine thank you um, there's another chat, uh, sorry, another chat, another question from Bernie. She's wondering if you um, have any need for OHS training um, or if there's any services with, with regards to training that you have needs of at this moment. Not at this moment. So, with the, so obviously with the integration into the bank, the bank have a list of supplies and there's a list of things that they do. So basically our procurement needs if i can put it that way is kind of aligning to the bank so using the supplies that they have and that type of thing however with the with with, with regards to learning and development or learning and or training whatever the needs are um, i mean that goes through our grace uh, department and it's always worthy if they send their details through that i can get hold of the the the, the ohs 
head and I can obviously send it through to her and then she will determine whether that is needed or not. I think it's always good to, to get the profiles of suppliers in terms of the fields that they providing the services in because yes, it might not be a requirement now, but when that requirement does come up, we've actually got the information with us that we can invite them to partake with. Okay, so um, would you say that it could be advisable that if a SMME is interested in being a vendor and wants to know the possibility that that email address that you shared is the right place to touch base? Yes, it is the right place to touch base, okay. yes. Um, I'm that contact, so I will basically be managing that and I will make sure it gets to, through to the relevant person. Sometimes you would find that if the buyer sets up a meeting um, with the supplier, um, I will then be a part of those meetings as well, just to ensure that, you know, how it came on and that everything is legitimate. It's not just, you know, a fly-by-night type of thing. Mm. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Anissa. Um, Ty Ford uh, sent a message, but I'm actually, Ty, are you able to unmute yourself and quickly ask your question to Anissa directly? Okay. Hi, morning, Anissa. Morning, Florina. Morning, Ty. Um, so I think firstly, just, I think it's a, it's a great initiative that you guys are integrating with Standard Bank. Um, I have been trying for years to get in there, um, but I kept being told that, you know what, we've got a supplier, we're happy with them, we're not going out to market, which kind of dampens your spirit for trying. Um, but I think with an initiative like this, I hope it helps because I know Liberty goes out and you guys do do your close tenders. But the problem is, is that we normally miss those cutoff dates. So like I keep missing the one because I'm in gym management and there's the, the yes, yeah, so there's there's the gym out in Bramfontein, Standard Bank has. But every time I keep coming, I either come just too late because the, the RFQ has closed or something or like sometimes I speak to Kate and Kate's not there. I don't know if she's still with the organization. So yes. I think from my side, my question is, would would I then, how do I, get onto sort of that list because I keep trying, keep trying, but I keep missing it. Would it help if I then send my documents through to like preferential procurement and to actually get onto that list of invitees, I think. So yeah, Ty, thank you for that. You, you've asked, you. I mean, a very, very, uh, very good question. Um, basically what has happened in the sense of the gym itself is that the gym is no longer um how can i say it's no longer liberty um responsibility if i can put yes. it that way yes um we've uh we've gone through a process where um the grace team from the bank got involved and obviously they needed to determine whether the the gym is actually beneficial to liberty actually managing and what we found is is that because the gym um is being managed by somebody else. Um, what had happened, the, the 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 because of the hybrid model of working, yeah. um, the gym actually lost a lot of members because people were attending gyms closer to home as opposed to coming into Brampton and and attending the gym. So what the result is is that the the membership of Liberty uh, or Liberty membership dropped, which didn't what did not make any financial sense to the actual gym owner. So well, the result is, is that we actually have parted ways, if I can put it that way, um, just about two months ago, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And I say parted ways, meaning that the gym is now a gym that is being run by the owner on his own. It's no longer affiliated to Liberty. Um, the building that the gym was in, Liberty has also just sold the building, so it no longer belongs to us. And what has happened is, is, is that he's now needed to take in people from around the area as opposed to just Liberty mm -hmm. staff members. So the, I do know that, look, there's still a lot of talks that's going on. I know that the, the bank has its own gym in Simmons Street, but we have not reached a point yet where we uh, are fully included in terms of knowing what would be the way forward as far as the bank at the, uh, the, the gym at the bank goes. Okay. No, uh, thanks but, for that. Um, it helps yeah, a lot. I mean, if you, if you, if you want to, I mean, yeah, I don't want to create false hope saying that, oh, we're going to look at this in the future or whatever. But I just know that right now we have parted ways with the the, the gym owner that we were mm. sort of um, contracted with. 
Okay, no problem. Thanks for that, Denise. That helps a lot. Thanks, Ty. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yes, I was just going to ask him, Ifan, if you don't mind just unmuting yourself quickly and asking your question. Good morning, Paulina. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, Salamu alaikum, Fatima. Wa alaikum salam, it's Anissa Irfan. Oh, but, oh Anissa, ma'am. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, yeah, Irfan, um, founder of an uh, IY DigiPay, which is a fintech digital, digital payment platform. Um, at, we are, we are de dedicated to enhancing the uh, payment experience for users and businesses through innovative uh, technologies and reliable service deliveries. So I'm interested in exploring the possibility of partnering with uh, your institution as a payment and collection agent service provider. Um, could you please perhaps guide me on the process for becoming a service provider in this capacity? Ifan, I, I will not be able to actually give you that guidance right now, but I know the area that actually looks after this or takes care of this. Um, I think for me right now, the recommendation would be is that we would need to, I would need to probably introduce you to the head of that area. So the, so with, with, the, with the integration that is going on, you know, these departments that have obviously they've sort of broken, I shouldn't say broken up, but there's sort of been this integration of certain areas where they are now integrating into different areas. So that particular area um, that is usually that falls under our sales area and the head of that area is a guy by the name of Rihalan, Rihalan Chetty. Um, I think um, if you don't mind noting his name, Rihalan Chetty, um, I'm going to give you my email address. If you don't mind emailing me so that I can e introduce you to him and then obviously maybe take up that conversation from there. I, that's the only thing I can suggest right now, because as far as the type of service that you are providing, I'm not sure, you know, what it is that they're doing in that space and who we're using or or anything of the sort like that. So I I don't want to answer you on that. I'd rather than rather you speak to the person that's involved in it within that area, and you get better guidance in terms of way forward. Perfect. Shukran for that. Can you drop your email, perhaps? going to do that so um i think a lot of people well you said paulina did say it's a lot of new people that's here from last year so yes, yes. um dropping my email address and in fact last year um uh, anissa i did uh, uh approach did yes, uh, yes. We, I, and i did, did mention it but um nothing came yeah. forth so this is my second attempt no, sure. so yeah, so nothing came forth because of so our standard bank integration started two years ago, and I must be honest, it it wasn't um it wasn't a plug and fit thing that was going to happen, and there's a lot of departments that are still finding their way around things, knowing where it is that they belong. Do they still belong as Liberty or are they part of the bank? Our procurement department now reports into the bank, so we've kind of fully integrated into the bank. There's a lot of other areas where. Basically, um, like for marketing, there's, there's marketing teams from the bank that have actually integrated into Liberty. So there's a lot of that that is actually happening at the moment. And we're hoping that that, that whole process is sort of concludes by the end of this year. They're actually giving up to us until March next year that everything should be finalized. So we're hoping that we get ourselves out of this um, little rut that we find ourselves in sometimes. And by the end of this year. Shukran, Anissa. Welcome. Thank you, Paulina. Thank you. Okay, I see we've got two raised hands. So we'll start with Joel. Uh, Joel, do you mind quickly unmuting and just um, asking your question? Thank you. Good morning, um, Paulina. Um, yes, my question, is that, um, my question is that I just wanted to find out um, when regarding to uh, Liberty and also the with their um, collaboration with Star Bank uh, on insurance side of the, um, things, um, um, I'm a small um, um, company or SME, uh, which I do have a branch in uh, in Cape Town and uh, Northern Cape, 
Uh, but okay, what I do is that basically uh, on this um, company, it's uh, what you call a recovering company, it's a, a towing company. So um, then I've been trying to, you know, there's a, what you call um, accident vehicles or accident when it's motor vehicle accident. And uh, then what I, what, what I found out that they, they, they call a company from Bloomfontein, then he has to travel all, all from Bloomfontein to Northern Cape. It's almost about, um, let's say, a four hour drive. And, but there is a company like my small company in there where you could, you know, tap in to say, okay, fine, I can able to tow the vehicle to the second, uh, what you call destination area. But then we're not getting those kind of opportunities. So I just want to find out, so where do we fit in as a small company uh, when they're going to um, Liberty Life and Summer Bank? Thank you. Wow, that was such a very, uh, such a very good question. Thank you for that. So, yes. We are actually just tapping into that part of the Standard Bank insurance business right now. So um, basically that would then fall under us, under procurement. And um, we, are, we are in the process of engaging the heads of those areas to determine how their procurement processes work. Um, and, 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 to the, and, to, and to the question that you raised now is that obviously you want to be a part of that panel of, of, of um of the um, tow truck um, service providers um, for accidents and that type of thing. And um, that is exactly where we're at right now, trying to determine how do we, um, as Liberty, because we're taking on the procurement for those areas, how do we tap into that so that we have a sort of wider or broader access into that particular business to understand what it is that they're doing, how they're doing it, and how we can then optimize on whatever panels that they have and maybe having a lot more people um, as part of the panel to the point that you made somebody's in Cape Town, but somebody from Bloomington is coming down to do whatever needs to be done. It doesn't make a, a business sense at all. I mean, the finance, the financial loss to that type of engagement is huge. I know. So it, it makes a lot more sense having somebody in Cape Town providing that service in Cape Town. And yes, we do, we do find that uh, sometimes preference is given that where a broker is probably stranded out um, in some unknown area. And because he knows of a tow truck driver in Johannesburg, he's going to call this guy and, and ask him to come and do that service. It doesn't make sense because, like I said, the cost is quite huge around that. Um, all I can say is, is that please send us your details to that preferential procurement box. Kinsani Marvis is the actual lady that um, looks after that particular um, category. And I mean, she, I, I think they would basically add you on now, even without being a part of the panel, pro probably add you on now to be a part of um, a service provider from a Liberty perspective that they can engage with to provide those services in the area that you are sort of predominantly working out of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Anita. you so much. Thank you. Um, so we have time for one more question, um, just so that we don't delay the program. Um, so I wanted to ask um, Halid, I see your hand is raised. You can quickly ask your Hamid. question. Great, thanks. I have one uh, question, maybe not an easy question. Hi, Anissa, it's Halid. We've, we've been engaging for a very long time. Uh, I have a question, you know, and um, it's about um, liberty. Would you say that over the last 10 years, because I think I've been engaging with you for more than 10 years as a small business, um, would, is, has the ethos changed on liberty um, and willingness to do work with small businesses, especially now with the partnership? Because I must be honest, it has not been easy as a small business to do work with Liberty. And I know of a lot of businesses and these businesses that are here that have struggled to get in. And I know that, um, you know, from your point of view, it's very difficult as a transformation manager to create change in an organization uh, that doesn't really want to change. Uh, but uh, would you say that the future is looking better and there is change in the horizon? Or would you say that it's still the same as 10 years ago? So 
tell it here you do ask the difficult questions i'm and sorry <laughs> it's okay and 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 i and i think I, I don't want to actually go into the detail because i think you you have been made aware of the arrangements that have been sort of on the on the books for the past 10 years and in terms of how we do enterprise development supply development and yes it it has rather been it has been a bit sort of um sort of cumbersome on smaller suppliers what i'm excited about is is that i do see change on the horizon and one of the things that had me excited about the whole integration into the bank is the bank is very focused on be the bank is very focused on using small suppliers um it's 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 actually the excitement with me within me is like i can't explain it and and when i speak about that is is that i think everybody is aware that the bank actually does run their own um, enterprise development and supply development hubs and um, we've got a head of in that particular area now there was a head she's actually moved out she's no longer there there's somebody else that's taken over so they've consolidated the offering they don't have it as a separate offering anymore in terms of ed and sd for me i i think yes uh, things are looking a lot brighter um we have a, a cpo that is very focused on on transformation especially on smaller suppliers as well and i'm hoping and and i'm 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 excited that that with the with the 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 way she feels about it is that we will see a lot of change coming about in the liberty business where we do know that the culture has been it has sort of been very stagnant. It's who I know that can provide the service and do it for me, even if I have to pay it at a premium without engaging the smaller suppliers. Yes, it has been a difficult task on our, on our side, trying to sort of introduce these smaller suppliers into the Liberty space because of the, the, the mindset of 10 years ago that has still come through up until today. But there is change and it's it's not it's not overnight change it's actually happening gradually so yes i'm excited and i think there is opportunity into the bigger standard bank group especially with the offerings that they have from an ed and sd perspective and how smaller suppliers can be on board to partake in business processes um ultimately especially as far as liberty goes yeah thank you thank you thank there was you. a Sorry, um, 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 Paulina, somebody raised a question in the in the chat about being a financial institution, obviously a small um, financial institution. I'm just trying to get to it. Anissa, uh, if I can sure. ask you. Yes. Sorry, Anissa. I've got uh, our next session. The speakers are, are ready and waiting, and I don't want to push the session anymore. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to email you a list of the participants and the questions that they asked with their contact details. And um, we can either that you, if you choose to, can reach out directly to them, or otherwise you can respond to me on the document, and I can share the response with them directly. Um, but you will get all the questions asked, and we'll make sure that everybody's questions get uh, you know shared with you. Um, but Anissa, thank you. And I'm sorry that you had such a rush to join us this morning, but thank you in any case for still making time to come through. We truly appreciate the insights and wisdom that you shared with us to understand Liberty and the changes coming with, uh, you know, Standard Bank being there um, as a new, you know, part of the business. And we're excited for you and we're thank excited so for the charges coming. But thank you, Anissa. I hope you have an amazing day and uh, we look forward to chatting to you after this. Yes, thank you. And thank you to all the participants. Uh, and my apologies for being a few minutes late. Yes, I know what a difference a few minutes can make. So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to me. And thank you to you guys, Paulina, uh, for making these things possible and available to us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being a willing participant. It's amazing to have businesses that's willing to touch base with SMMEs and seeing what opportunities they are. Thank you. Thank have an you. amazing day. And you guys too. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.